So this isn't really how I wanted to introduce this new series idea that I've had bouncing around for a while, but yeah, that's life. What are you going to do? But quick sips are pretty much short subject videos where I talk about something under 30 minutes, under 20 minutes. And once you know, this is probably the best way to introduce this series because we are talking about the one, the only James Summerton. Now, I am reading from a script, but I did write this script off the cuff. It's coming straight from my brain, through my arms, to my fingers to type out here. Uh, I did this mainly because I didn't want to edit the audio too much as I'm trying to put this out relatively quickly. As I write this, it is February 29th, 2024. Yes, 29th. It is a leap year. Uh, and disgraced YouTuber James Summerton has decided to leap on back onto our pages with another apology video on his now newly activated channel. And for those who missed what happened, I'll try to explain this as best as I can. James Summerton is a video essayist that mainly talked about media through the gaze of intersectionality and queer film theory. People who watched him loved how well thought out his subject matter was and all of the different topics that he dove into. And the more people watched, the more popular James got in the queer video essay space. In fact, he was apparently one of the top ones at the time. He not only informed, but inspired a lot of people. So imagine their shock when a whole video that talked about different examples of plagiarism on YouTube comes out and the bulk of the video is his work. Popular queer video essayist H. Bomber Guy came out with the video Plagiarism and YouTube and completely rocked James's world. For years, James had plagiarized different academics, small queer writers, and POC queer writers for his videos. He had been called out multiple times before, but because he was often quick to either patch up his mistakes or just frame himself as a victim so his fans would believe him first, nothing really happened. However, the evidence presented in the H-bomb video was just too much, and he even reached out to victims of James' stealing to show just how impactful this whole thing was. While this often gets casted as just YouTube drama, plagiarism, especially academic plagiarism, is a very serious thing. Especially when the people you're stealing from are marginalized creators who are often not being fairly compensated, if at all, for their work. But then, oh, oh, what's this? Oh my god, it's music reviewer Todd in the shadows with the steel chair! Yes, music critic and channel awesome OG Todd in the shadows did a whole hour long video breaking down James's content. Showing that even the parts that he did write on his own were just factually incorrect. And this came as a shock because Todd never does anything like this. Call outs are not his thing and he never really moves from music content. So do you know how bad you have to be at this to make him take time out to do this? So with his credibility flatlined and two shit apologies later, James deactivated everything and left the internet. Until today. Now, while I want to try to keep this under 20 minutes, I really don't know how long this will be. I thought about doing a live stream to this, but honestly, it would take me four hours just to get through it. But um, I'm going to try to speed through this 43-minute apology and really just hit the notes of where I felt the most frustrated. And um, I want to say to those that James hurt, I am so sorry that you continually have to put up with his bullshit. And I am so sorry that he just can't seem to go away and he continues to make bullshit apologies that do not fully cover and I don't think grasp the the seriousness of what he did and I am so sorry that you keep being subjected to empty promises on his behalf especially when it comes to this new monetary um give back thing that he wants to do it, it, ugh. but um yeah so we'll see how this goes and what an introduction to the new series, Quick Sip. So grab your cup of tea and join me as we watch this train wreck. Thanks. So in the time that it's taking me to come back to this, uh, as I'm doing this voiceover, it is March 2nd. Mainly because, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't want to do this on the last day of Black History Month. Um, seeing as how, you know, like there are so many other great marginalized creators uh specifically marginalized creators of color who talk about this stuff that james did and did it so much better but he just took their words and 
cut and pasted them together in order to make his video essay so he can make money. And I was like, you know what? I am not going to spend the last day of Black History Month thinking about this horrible, horrible man. So I was like, let me just stop. So uh, when I got home that day, I decided to go back and watch Todd in the Shadows video about all of the misinformation that he had in his videos. And then yesterday I went back and watched H-Bomber Guy's section on James Somerton and his big plagiarism YouTube video. And I've ultimately come up with a few points. Now, I will try to find the sections in James's long-winded video uh, so that way I can splice them together with what I have here. But just know it's going to be a little bit difficult, um, mainly because... I find the whole thing to be so derivative and just insulting. Like watching it the first time, I was just kind of shocked that he had the gall, the gumption, the chutzpah to come back. And watching again, now that I've calmed down and the excitement around him being here has calmed down, I'm angry. So, and I went back and I looked at my notes and I listened to my notes because I also did like a live note taking when I was watching his video the first time to stop and pause and just get my thoughts out quickly. So yeah, I'll, I'll try, but I would recommend that you go watch his video if you can stand it. Uh, but these are essentially the points that I have issue with. So one, he claims that he made the mistake of speaking for everyone in the queer community and he should have made sure that he specified it was their words and not his. And the thing is, is that he likes to state that, you know, being a white cis gay man on YouTube, he has the white and the cis thing going for him and people will essentially listen to him when it comes to these topics. And while yes, it's true, society will listen to a cis white man, even if he is gay before, let's say a black woman, a Latino man or a queer Asian man, you know, whoever, you still purposefully made these underrepresented folks words yours you gave no inclination that you were referencing them at all so many other creators like philosophy tube fd signifier sean and of course h bomber will have a citation above so the audience knows oh they're referencing this they don't lead you to think that all of their words that they're saying are theirs alone two one reason as to why he says he did this, and when I mean this, I mean plagiarism, is that he received a bunch of complaints about viewing queer culture through one lens, i.e. his experience as a cis white guy and being just a gay man, and Nick, who is apparently uh, non-binary and is also white. Now, maybe it's just me, but... I normally assume that when somebody is reviewing media and especially dissecting it, that they're talking about it through their experiences. Normally, uh, like if I'm watching something like, let's say, Be Kind Rewind does, then I'm assuming that she's talking about it through the viewpoint of a woman. Like she's viewing it through, let's say, a more feminist lens. A lot of her other dissections and talking of media often go that route, right? And like if I was going to dissect a piece of media, one of the first ways that I would do it or would think to do it is to look at it through the lens of a black woman. Like I am a black American woman who is bisexual. Those are like the four lenses that I automatically view media through and probably the ones that I'm going to go to the first time that I think about talking about a certain piece of media that I like. It's just something that you do and I often assume that people who watch this kind of content know that unless you're stating, hey, I'm going to be viewing this through the lens of like, uh, let's say, I don't know, that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, uh, Pumping Iron, right, about the bodybuilding comp competition and you're going to be viewing it through uh, the lens of queer film theory. Then it's like, okay you know, we expect you to be hitting those points. But if you don't, then we have a problem. So I don't know why he's trying to scapegoat his audience like this. It feels like he's trying to say that uh, he had to do this because his audience wasn't intelligent enough to understand, like, the first place he's going to go to when talking about these topics is his own lived experience, you know? Three, he did not mention at any point in that weak-ass apology 
any of the accusations of misogyny in his work. Just, it don't exist, I guess. Four, blaming YouTube and the algorithm for pushing his videos rather than those of the marginalized creators he stole from, and then blaming the need to keep feeding the algorithm for how he got here. While YouTube is known for pushing more radical and conservative videos, that is just a BS excuse, full stop. Because if you know this, then you should have been practicing proper citation and calling out YouTube's abhorrent algorithm. Like, congratulations, you found the problem, but what's the solution? As well, you don't need to make elaborate videos all the damn time. Short, simple videos work all the same. But even then, with as much green he was pulling in via Patreon, he could afford to take the time to do more research for a video. I am someone working a 9 to 5 with an elderly and sick parent who I help support. When James was talking about a lot of the shit he was going through, believe me, I understand. But that's still no good excuse for this. Like, believe me, I know just how much effort and time this stuff takes. I keep mentioning about the Gold Digger video that I wanted to do for February, but as someone who works a 9 to 5, I couldn't really find the time to do a lot of the research that I needed, and so it's essentially been pushed back to March. In my last video, I talked about all the books that I found that I'm going to have to read when I start doing just a silly little video idea I have where I go and I watch all of Elvis's biopics made about him. And... I didn't really know how much research I was going to be getting into, but I have to say I'm excited. I'm excited when I learn more about the origin of the word gold digger and how this perception came to be in media. I'm excited to learn about this American scene legend whose life was essentially a mystery until everybody decided to open up their mouths about it. But that comes from the fact that I'm doing my own research and I actually enjoy what I'm doing and I'm not really doing it for a monetary gain. If I make money from this then that's just a bonus but it's not what I'm in for I'm in because I find this stuff fascinating and I want to share it with people and be hey did y'all know this did you see this four I think I'm starting to lose count already Blaming the ADHD as well as head trauma on why he forgot to credit writers now as someone who is a video maker <laughs> and who edits her own videos and I know James does why would you keep this in you even mentioned that you know especially with the ADHD issue that you will be called out on this and <laughs> like you are because there are many many video creators with ADHD who are not doing this shit like I I'm flabbergasted like okay the head trauma fine but you learn how to cite, at least I did, as shit the American education system is. I learned how to cite when I was in high school with all those papers that I had to do. And I'm assuming that because Canada always brags about how their school system is better than America's, that you did too. And we both went to college, right? You went, I'm assuming, and became a marketing agent. Like, we all had to learn how to cite properly at some point. So, ADHD or no, I'm not understanding how you would forget at that point. Like, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, but this is gaslighting. Because, like, when I went to go watch the H-Bomber guy video again, one part of the video, when he talks about the first time James got called out on plagiarism, which was by this person on Twitter, he literally said something along the lines of like, oh, well, this was a mistake. I forgot to cite this person when I was first doing videos. I wasn't used to it, but I'll do better now. And then he just added the credit in the description of the video and then got called out again for it and then blocked the person. And then the author found out about it and told him, hey, you need to properly credit me. And then he went back to uh, delete the old video and just put in the guy's name at the beginning like that was it. Like, you've already covered this. Maybe this is a testament to his memory because... I can't believe you would forget that you've already explained this at some point because like you claim that oh you didn't start citing people correctly um, until late your later videos and in your earlier stuff you just weren't used to it right but now you do it and now you're blaming the ADHD you can't even like and it's obvious you've seen uh, Harris's video on you 
Because you even named this one a measured response. Like, it, it's baffling, man. And you even admit it earlier. Earlier, you admit it in the same apology video that you felt a need to produce videos at a breakneck speed due to the revenue you were receiving and that you needed. You needed to feed the algorithm to keep your videos relevant and to keep the views up and the money coming in. But also the ADHD and the head injury. Baby, you gotta pick a struggle. Okay, you got to pick a struggle that you're going to stick with if this is the narrative that you want to keep perpetuating. Now, while I don't really care about Talos, um, I have to say that Talos did not fail due to poor moving planning. It happened because of poor business planning. Like you only took a first pass at a script and just made that the final go-to to start production? You Like, are you Tyler Perry? Who does this? I can tell you how Talos failed. It was a lack of actual budgeting, actual planning beyond I just want to make movies. Like, there was no smaller film made to show the people what you could do. There was no second pass at a script before you just automatically decided to put out a casting call. Like, you can even hire somebody or, like get somebody who's already worked on smaller films to like maybe give you a suggestion on how to do this thing like hell given how big and up and coming you were why didn't you ask one youtuber who i know made a full-length film that was actually a fucking documentary called clothes for storm bright sun films and he's canadian too can't y'all like link up or something meet at a tim hortons and talk about this five, six, I don't know. I shouldn't have started counting because now I'm lost. <laughs> um, but the excuse of doing it for Nick, like on the reason why he brought these videos back up is a crock of shit, okay? So he reactivated the channel not just because he wants to continue to make videos, but claims that he also wants Nick's work not to go to waste. And the videos are all things they have wrote without outside research you know, or anything pertaining to outside quotations. So this is all just them, right? And if there's any plagiarized material in there, he already edited it out, most likely using YouTube's editing feature. One, if you're really about removing plagiarized material from your videos at this point, the whole channel would be gone. This channel should be wiped. There should be no video except the apology that you just made. Point blank period, because how can we believe you now? How can I sit here and believe that every that you took out every little bit of plagiarism that you claimed to not know was there or claimed didn't exist? How do I know you took that all out there? And two, you claim you want to do this for Nick to have a portfolio, but this is honestly going to fuck him over. The moment someone Googles him and sees he did work with the outed plagiarist, that's it. What kind of help does this do? And looking back at the H-Bomber vid, Nick is already an established writer. He's written a couple of books, I think. Uh, I remember one he pointed out, and he also does his own videos. Why are you doing this to him? And this kind of goes on a bit of a tangent that I noticed. James seems really codependent on Nick. And H-Bomb kind of pointed this out as well as how he will often regard Nick as almost just like the main component in a lot of the videos. And it seemed like it was throwing him under the bus. But also I believe it's just because he was really codependent on Nick for a lot of not just the writing, but the planning of the videos. Even the planning of Talos. Because the main catalyst James says uh, that broke the movie studio down was Nick moving and then James seemingly moving as well to be closer to Nick and now you want to do this whole thing with putting up these videos that can ultimately damage Nick's career at least in my viewpoint I don't know there's something weird going on here but that's for a completely different video I want to wrap this up we are now three for three with crummy apologies from James Somerton and this is the worst one I mean, I feel for him with his mom and everything going on as someone who is taking care of a parent as well. I have one parent who I'm taking care of, another one who is not in the best of health and especially in this financial climate. Believe me, I get it. But 
not addressing these issues properly and making up all these excuses as to why you weren't doing this for years at this point is just madness. It's gaslighting. And one thing that I really want to stress is that he did not address any of the issues that Todd in the Shadows brought up in the other video about him just fabricating facts straight up. Which is another reason why I don't understand he's keeping up videos where he claims there's no plagiarism. Because your facts are most likely wrong. You did not bring that up at all. I also don't like the fact that he's using Nick and H-Bomb as a reason to keep going with making videos and keeping the channel running. And setting up his Patreon again. When you really don't need to be doing that. You need to stop. You need to take time away. You need to just... I, I don't know. You just need to not be doing this. In fact, you know what you need to be doing? Just be a production assistant. Just be an editor. It's obvious that's what you want to be doing and that's where your talents lie. Many folks like myself don't really care for editing, especially longer videos. So if you were an editor for hire, I'm pretty sure people would be quick to hire you for that. But overall, it just seems like James just cared about money and still cares about money. Because if you really care about this shit, you put the work in. As well, trying to get folks to watch again with the caveat that money from the videos will go to people that he hurt with none of them verifying that this is happening is some gall, okay? And I also really want to stress this point. Going back to the issue of Todd's video with the fabricating of facts. Especially because James is a queer content creator and he specialized in analyzing media through a queer lens and also claiming to highlight a lot of queer cinema and history. And it's something that even H-Bomb highlighted in his video. It's imperative now more than ever that we be accurate. That we actually credit these queer writers with their words in a time where... Schools don't even want to acknowledge fucking slavery, let alone queer history. So people are looking elsewhere to get information. And that includes YouTube and YouTubers who claim to be doing the research, who claim to be actually diving in and giving facts and analysis on this stuff. The history is being erased and it's by design. And as a black and a queer person, I've been seeing this for as long as I've been both. With black history being erased and rewritten. Queer history being annihilated. The magnitude of this, I think, is really being understated. As to just being a mistake. I think it's just best if, if you just go. Just go. I hope you become a better person in your life going forward. But I don't think that that better life includes YouTube. Okay. Um, that was four pages that I wrote by hand, by the way. I decided to do what H-Bomb did. And I'm going to credit him for this by shouting out some YouTubers who I feel like they talk a lot about really good subjects and also just a few specifically queer content creators who may not necessarily talk about film analysis or anything like that, but who I really want to highlight and just say, hey, give these people support. Give these people support. Give them your time, your effort, your energy. Don't give James a goddamn thing. The minute that I post this video, he will be out of my head forever i don't want to think about him ever again in life so i want to highlight black femininity tv a great channel that highlights a lot about black culture specifically black 2000s late 90s culture which was peak okay ray mona who is like becoming the biggest thing in the lost media space on finding a lot of lost media specifically when it pertains to anime lost media old girl has been killing it and i've been watching her since her clueless video where she found what we assumed to be the lost or never made and released clueless ds video game of course my friend ant who you guys know and honestly i've been when I met him all those years ago and I would read his articles, they were always great stuff. And I'm glad he finally, finally is doing video essays. He's already knocked it out of the park with so many of them. So continue to support him and his channel. 
Chloe Sunflora, who I actually saw in a live stream of Ants I recently subbed to, and their latest video about Steven Universe is just really amazing and insightful, and I highly recommend that as kind of like the gateway if you want to watch their content, but also please go check out their whole catalog. It's Divya is an amazing channel. I used to watch back on my old YouTube channel and I'm starting to follow her again now where she does really fun, quirky book content and I think you will really enjoy her personality. Lizard Lay is actually a friend of a friend who is a fantastic cosplayer. Like, oh my God, Lizard does some of the best cosplays around. Please go follow their channel and see their amazing projects and just go support them, please. Oh my God, you got to see their stuff. Pushing Up Roses, who I feel isn't a small creator, but is one that's not talked about a lot. She kind of popped off with her uh, Murder She Wrote a video series which is always entertaining but she also used to talk about point and click mystery games which is something that I always found really entertaining but also her murder she wrote recaps are just peak so I highly recommend her she's fantastic great personality and just wonderful to watch and lastly, Reads with Rachel, who is a part of the BookTube community, who does very, very honest book reviews and is also combating book banning down in Florida and just everywhere. And she also does a series called Authors Behaving Badly, where if you might have had like a little buzz about something going on in the BookTube or BookTok community about something happening, like some drama happening with an author, bet she's going to make a video about it and give you the breakdown and she also has a series called uh did it deserve one star well she will actually review, review a book that was involved in a controversy that might have got like mass downvoted on goodreads and actually read it to see well was the hate deserved or was this just an overblown whatever which i love i love that she's being fair about it but those are some creators that I wanted to highlight. Let me get out of here. This short sip was not that short at all. But my God, am I glad to be done with it. I vanquished James to the shadow realm. <laughs> all right, you guys. I will see you later in another video. Bye.